Grandma, you were born to Christian and Dottie Nelson in Salem. Tell us about your grand, your parents. Well, my, they were wonderful parents. My dad was born in Denmark and came over when he was six years old across the ocean, and they took a a train a, a train from uh, the East Coast and come to Utah, and they had joined the he had joined the church over in Denmark, and uh, his family was against it very much against it so. They didn't like it, and that he joined it, and and so he left there and came over to Utah. And my mother's mother died the day that she was born, and uh, we had a, a aunt that called and said that came and said, "Oh, I would love to keep her t till after the funeral," and she they she kept her till she was six years old, and her real dad came down and said, I'm going to go homestead in Oregon, and uh, I would like to take Dottie with me. And she said, well, you know, I know she's your child, but I've had her for six years. And she said, he said, well, I'm going to let you keep her. And so she stayed in Salem, and she had a wonderful childhood. She. Uh, this lady just loved her, and, and she had a wonderful childhood. So, when you think back on growing up um, in Salem, what were some of the memories you have of, of your home, um, of your, your growing up? What are some of the things you kids did in the summer times and, and, and the you know, winters? Well, we had a, there was a house on every corner. Salem was in, on the block that we lived on. And uh, we would go out onto the north side and play, and we'd play kick the can and and a lot of those old games, you know, and uh, one that's called "Come Home," the sheep, the sheep come home. We had a wonderful time out there. Did you uh, you 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 lived through the depression of 1932? You would have been. Uh, not too old, but old enough to remember. What, what do you remember about the Depression? Well, I don't remember an awful lot about it because I was little and uh, I know <clears throat> some people really did suffer uh, through that Depression. But in Salem, everybody would grow a garden. And so they had food, you know, from the garden that they would take care of and bottle fruit and stuff like that in the in the winter time, and uh, in the winter we would sleigh ride constantly. We all had Red Rider sleighs, and we would get on one behind a horse, and he'd they'd pull us. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. We also had a great big bob sleigh that was pulled by horses. And uh, we had fill it. The, it would be filled with straw on the bottom, and we'd have hot rocks and blankets, and we could go all over Salem, and everybody did that. So, did you ever ice skate down on that Salem pond? No, I didn't, because I couldn't. My ankles would not. We only had skates then, that had they weren't didn't have any shoes. So I couldn't keep them, I couldn't keep my ankles up. And so I never did skate on the pond, but my brother did all winter long. He skated there on the pond. Hmm. I uh, heard recently that, that you were baptized in the Salem Pond by Don Pierce. Mm -hmm. Do you, is that right? Yes. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, baptism then, <laughs> was great and it used to have a, a train, we called it the Orem train, and it would go from uh, from Payson to Salt Lake and it bounced all the way up and down. But the tracks went over the Salem Pond and so I was, I was allowed to swim in Salem Pond, but I, we would lay out on the, on the tracks when we could, 
And then when we heard the train coming, we'd get, get up and jump in the pond. And they, I'm sure they only had baptisms once a year because my birthday is in late September and uh, that's cold. And so we were all baptized in August. And Don Smith did baptize me in Salem Pond right by the tracks. Yeah, Don Pierce. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, and so because because of that, they, they did that so kids wouldn't catch cold and become sick. Is that why they would do it all in August? The baptisms? I guess. Okay. They just did it once a year. Wow. All right. Um, tell, tell me about your home. Did you, you, you came through an area where, you know, you saw cars um, start to come uh, in your generation. Um, phones, did you have some of that stuff? You, you, you talked to me about, you, you mentioned you had a, one of the first cars in town was a, was a, a big Nash. Big black Nash. Nash, and it didn't have any uh, windows in it, but when it would get cold, or rainy, or whatever, we had curtains in it, and they had a cellophane uh, in the middle of it that you could look out the windows, but we would just snap. We'd snap those curtains on the car. But we always had two cars in our house, at our house, because my dad had a great big truck and, uh, and that he did his business in, and we, we had the t touring car. And we could stand on the running boards. If he would see us, he would just stop and let us run over to the car. And then he'd, we'd stand on the running board and he'd take us home in the car. Were, were cars um, common in that time? No, no, they were not. Telephones, you had a telephone and was one of the first in town to have that. We did, we had a telephone and people would call my, our number and uh, the phone would hang on the wall, and it was a party line, so anybody, but they would call my mother, and she would take the message down and write it down, and put me on a, our pony, and send me to take the message, give them the note. And then they would either come and to our house and telephone back, or do whatever they wanted to with it. Wow. So that was kind of probably a neat thing back then to be the house with the phone and oh, yes. a car and some uh -huh. things. Um, Grandma, I got to ask you: Did you did you have bathrooms in homes? What, what no. was that like? Well, it was terrible. We didn't have bathrooms. We had those outside bathrooms, and it was pretty cold in the winter to go out there. But we lived through it, and then we had a, a one put in our home when we built our new home. We had one put in there. So it was, uh, you, you, you went from not having one to having one and, and saw what that was like mm -hmm. to, to, to be inside of a warm home. Tell me about the, the first date you remember going on with Grandpa Ralph, if you can remember. <laughs> I really can't remember. I met him in high school and uh, I don't know whether I went to the junior prom with him or not, but Anyway, I went with him in high school. We started to date then. And what was a typical date uh, back then? What did you do on a date? Well, they would come in cars and pick us up, and we would go to dances at Spanish Fort Pavilion, and it was an old, an old floor that bounced up and down, like, and it was really, really fun, and. Uh, we would do that in the, the winter on our dates, and then we would, uh, in the summer, we'd go down to the Arrowhead Resort, and they had a, big, a dance hall down there, and we would dance in there, in the, that hall, and then come back up to Spanish Fork and get a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> So that was kind of what you did in those days. Yes. Uh -huh. um, you married Grandpa uh, in, in what year? 1939. And do you remember that day? Oh yeah, I remember it. Tell us about that day and maybe where you went on your honeymoon. Uh -huh. Well, we went to the Salt Lake Temple and got married. 
We didn't have a car. Uh, his family didn't have a car. And uh, we went up there and to the temple and got married. And uh, then we, we came back and we got hotel, the hotel in, in uh, Provo, we stayed in that hotel. That was our honeymoon. That first night, wow. And then, uh, Grandma, you, you, you married, and, and, and then, you know, the world uh, changed in 1941. We entered into the war, and that, I know, was a hard time for you and everybody in America, really. Tell, tell us about what you remember of the war. Well, when I was over to my mom's in Salem, uh, they de President Roosevelt declared war on um, Japan and also the Germans because we had been over in France helping the Germans, not helping the Germans, but I mean helping the French people. and. Um, It was just terrible. I, I was over to my mom's and I had Kay in my arms and he declared war on December the 7th. And I said, oh, that's gonna take my husband. And dad says, no, you've got a baby. But I had two before he was drafted. And uh, I had Diana, she was 11 months old and Kay was three when the war, we went to the war. And it was terrible. Uh, you had to have um, tickets to get a pair of shoes. You had to have tickets to get uh, gas. I gave my gas tickets to my dad because they had a farm and he had a big tractor. and. Uh, so I gave my gas tickets to him, but if you didn't have, and sugar, you had to have sugar. And uh, my husband left on, the, uh, on June the 6th. He left to go to the front lines. And he went to uh, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas and trained. And uh, everybody he trained with went to the Philippines, but they lost his papers and he went to to England to Europe and uh, he was sent right to the front lines when he got there and uh, he never talked much about the war but he said that they he also walked clear across Germany and never had his boots off for 18 days and and they uh, would said when they would come to a farm, the people let them, was nice to them, they let them stay in the house. And if they wasn't, they'd make them go out and sleep in the barn. And, but they'd k kill their chickens for food. He said they were hungry because all they had was this dehydrated food. And, uh, but anyway, he lived through the war and come home. Now, um, Grandpa, uh, I had the opportunity to go over there to Normandy this last summer with your son, Dwayne, my dad, um, and, and go to the Omaha Beach and, and all of that. Um, and and uh, my dad told me that he was shot a couple times in the Battle of the Bulge. He was. And got a couple of Purple Hearts for that. He that. did. He was not hurt bad, though, because he had shrapnel in his legs and his arm the rest of his life. But they, it wasn't a bad wound. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when he came home from the war? Oh, yeah. What was that like? <laughs> well, the war ended, and uh, he uh, was down somewhere. And he says, when they, the Russians came to meet him, and he said, the Russians let us know right at that minute you stay on your side of the fence and we'll stay on our side of the fence. And they always thought that they would have to go back to war with the Russians. But uh, he, was a, he was lucky that he got to come home. 
Did uh, what was what was he like as a husband and a father? I I never got to know him. Most of you know the grandkids never got to know him. What was he like? He absolutely adored his kids. He really did, and he adored Christmas. He loved Christmas, and uh, we. <laughs> it was. He was a good dad, and he supported the kids and everything that they they needed at that time. Was uh, is that where you became a real fan of Christmas? Because all of my Christmas memories, and I think the reason I love Christmas today is because of you and how you uh, how you celebrated the holidays and Christmas especially. I mean, around here at Christmas time, there was always candy hidden. There was always things to come and do. Your your parties, you know, are still the the number one thing talked about. Um, you were just the best at the holidays. Why was that, and, and what do you love so much about that? Well, I just always loved Christmas, and so did Ralph. He just absolutely loved it, and uh, we just got our kids what they wanted and, and a few extra things, you know, and uh, we just had a great time at Christmas time. You had five children. Uh -huh. Tell me about each one of those, real brief, uh, just something about each of them. Well, Kay was our oldest daughter, and she was just a lot of fun. She could, she walked early, and she, she was just a great little girl and a great uh, person, and she met Arden Kitchen, and uh, he was he was really bashful, and he came from a family that didn't have anything. And uh, Kay and uh, Arden got married, and she brought him right out of the his d depression, and he became an orthodontist and had a wonderful life, both of them. And they had, uh, let's see, five to six children. Three boys and three girls. Yeah, they did. Okay, six children. And then uh, after Kay came... Uh, Diane. Diane. And she was a, just a doll, too. She uh, had a great time. They had great friends, good friends. And uh, she married a... Uh, person and he became a foot specialist and they lived in Chicago. Kay and Arden lived in Chicago when he went to school at Northwestern University to become an orthodontist. Okay. And and uh, Diane married Art and was Art Hatfield. He had became, ended up becoming a, a doctor. Arth uh -huh, an orthodontist. Uh -huh. And then um, uh, and they kind of lived together back in Chicago. Chicago, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had some fun times there. Yeah. And Diane and Art had how many children? Seven. seven. They had seven children. Yeah. And uh, they live in California now. And they're doing really good. I remember as a kid when the Hatfields would come up, we would be so excited <laughs> to have them roll in in that big van. And we knew that we, we would just, whatever time of year it was, we would just have the best of times. It was fun to have them always come up from California. when they I would get up some mornings and there'd be 10 grandkids out here on the floor they'd get together you sleep know <laughs> and they sleep over good times um, you then had your third child karma karma and she has been a delight all of her life too she was uh, just a great person she still is and she raised uh, three sons from Kay, and uh, she, they, they just love her to this day. And she married uh, a guy from here, Ron Johnston, who's mm -hmm. also from Spanish, right. yeah. and they had five of their own, plus the three that they raised uh -huh. when Kay passed away. Yeah. So really eight. Yeah, they had 
and they finally got a daughter, a daughter, their last one, uh, Lindsay, but she raised uh, all those seven boys and uh, Lindsay. Yeah, a lot of good memories over at their house too. Oh yeah. I'll all the say. summers over there, we had we had some great times. We used to go snowmobile and take them all and go snowmobile, and you know. Yeah, it was fun. Good times, that's that's for sure. Um, then uh, you finally had a son. What was that like to finally have a son? And well, it was wonderful, uh, and he was the only one that Ralph saw born, because uh, they just didn't let people in the hospitals, just when I mean in the rooms when they were having children, it was just, they just didn't get to, and he got to, to see Dwayne Barn and the tears rolled right down his eyes. He was so thrilled to have a son, and he's still a great son. And he married uh, uh, Julie. Justin. Justin, from also from here. And, and she's uh, just like my own daughter. Yeah, and then he, and then they had me and, and four boys, uh, of course, on the second of five. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of times over here and sleepovers yeah. and it was always nice to come over here because you knew you'd wake up to a, a windows open and a great hot breakfast and you slept perfect all night. And we used to watch the love boat at nights and <laughs> those kind of shows when we were when we were young. Those were great times. And then there was a what I consider a great blessing. Um, some years later you had Jill and you know, she came at just the right time. She did. Thirteen years after Dwayne was born, I had Jill. And she has been just absolutely, a, I shouldn't say a perfect child, but she has been really, really a good person. And everybody that knows her loves her. And she, uh, the kids used to fight about her. You know, let me have her, let me hold her, and, and all that. And the thing that made uh, my husband so mad was they asked him if it was his granddaughter. <laughs> and he did not like that. But she has been a joy, and she still is. And she married uh, Mark Carlson, also from the Spanish. Spanish, family. yes. And they have uh, five uh -huh. children as well. Yeah. <laughs> It's been very interesting. I haven't me. told you about the thresher, so. No, I'm going to get there. I want to know about that and a few other things. You came up through the times when um, things, you know, a lot of people farmed. Your dad was a produce guy and, and made a lot of money moving produce. Uh, you, you mentioned something this morning that you asked me if I knew what a thresher was. And I did. So explain what that is and, and what some of the things that the kids did on the farms. Well, the, we used the, we always had uh, hired workers because my dad wasn't home long enough to work in the to do the farming too. But when the threshers came, they would they'd plant the grain and it would come up so high and then it would have the heads on the top of it, and they would cut the the grain with a uh, machine and it would put the grain into bunches, not too big a bunches, and then they would just drop it there. And then the, a truck would come along and uh, pick up those heads of grain and take it down into your yards and, and put it in a great big round circle there and then the threshers came along and they were, it was a big machine, and they would throw the grain into the machine. They also had big gunny sacks there to catch, the wheat would come out one side and the straw on the other side. And people would catch the grain, these big gunny sacks, and take it into the granary and put it in bins. And our granary was full of bins and uh, wheat. And they used to feed the threshers. I can remember uh, doing some peas or beans out there for mother, but they got smart. The women did and said, we're not cooking for them anymore. So that was a real good experience. Were the, were the uh, 
So, Grandma, you, you've lived almost 95 years. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, that's, that's unheard of. Most people never, ever get to experience that. You're always our, uh, one of the presidents of the United States, George H.W. Bush. I mean, you went through the wars. It's kind of a neat thing. You've, you, you've seen it all. Um, what's the secret of living so long and being so happy and, and uh, having the life you've lived? What, what would you tell all of us? who's going to watch this later, all of your kids and grandkids, great-grandkids and great-greats, um, about living a great life? Well, I just don't know. I had great friends in Salem growing up, real good friends. And, and, and I've got to tell this that, that I should have told it long ago, but we didn't have heaters in the car or air conditions in the car when I was young. You'd get in the car in the winter and you'd about freeze to death before you got home, you know. But it, it was fun and I, I don't know why I've lived so long, but I have. And I've enjoyed my life. I've had a good life. Two tragedies, but other than that, I'm fine. Um, you, you've always had the church in your life. Mm -hmm. um, Twelve LDS prophets have been the head of the church in your life. Um, uh, what has the church meant to you and, and maybe your testimony in the church? Well, my, uh, well, I think if you belong to the church, you have a, a good life. It's a, if <laughs> you do, you just live a good life if you belong to the church. And I have been, I've worked in it. I've worked in the primary I have been, a, a, we used to call it mutual, that's young ladies now, now time I've been president of that. And uh, I've worked in the Sunday school. So and then I've just gone to church and had, my kids has all been married in the temple, every one of them. And they've all got wonderful little families. And uh, what more can you ask for? Yeah, that's true, that is true. So. Everybody's sealed together, and so um, I guess one of the greatest blessings is is knowing that everybody will be together. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, Grandma, um, this has been awesome uh, to be able to sit down with you about some of your life, and um, you've been just a great grandma. I mean, everybody would loves to come. You 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 get everybody at all your parties. Um, all the grandkids love to. To, uh, to come and um, when we're not here and we're with each other, we're always talking about you and um, the grandma that you were. So uh, we love you and appreciate that. And thanks for, for giving us this time today. And, um, hopefully this will be something that, you know, people will enjoy for many, many years. And Can I say what one other thing? Yes, please. Well, uh, when we used to grow the hay, the grain, uh, not the grain, the alfalfa, they'd take it into the, they'd cut it and then they'd put it into trucks. And I learned how to drive out in the field because uh, uh, there's nothing you could hurt out in the field, you know. And I drove the trucks while they put the hay in. And the hay, We'd take it down into the barns, and they'd have a great big huge fork that would put down in the hay, and they they had a horse that would holler, that would take it out. They'd holler giddy up, and the horse would take it out into the road, and they'd put it up into the barn and dump the hay, and then the horse would turn around. Well, one day my dad said, "Will you please?" He called me Vernie. Will you please? come and lead this horse. Well, I was just a little kid and they hollered giddy up and that horse took a lunge and I took a lunge right through the yard. I never had to do that ever again. <laughs> Your dad was pretty good to you, wasn't he? Oh yes, oh yes. And then I've got to tell you a Halloween story. You know, we didn't go trick or treating then in my days. We went tricks, we did tricks. Well, we had done two or three tricks, and they weren't too good, but nothing really bad, you know. We'd rolled on some windows with 
soap and threw some trash on one's man yard that you couldn't even walk on it. He kept it so clean. And then we was coming home <clears throat> and we passed this lady's house and but she had a big, huge wooden gate. And I just reached over and uh, shook the grate. Well, she took after us with a beet knife. Maybe you guys don't know what a beet knife is, but just a great big sugar beet, and you would put it on your knee and chop the end of it off and throw it in trucks to take it down to have to the sugar factory. Well, she came after us, and we went to Mern's grandpa's, but my uncle, and he told her to go on home and tend her own children. And if he, she touched us, she'd be in trouble. So we went, started home, and uh, we were pretty good-sized kids. And uh, I think we was in our early teens. And uh, she, I always, I went home and Mern went home, and I heard Mern scream. So I run in the house and I said, Mern's been killed, she's been killed. And my dad leaped out of bed, put on his overalls and run. And uh, they told her she ever touched one of us that she would be put in prison. And uh, that's Halloween. I've never been Halloweening since either. <laughs> but I was, I had my, an operation on my appendix. I had to have them taken out when I was in high school. And you were just in a room. They didn't have a button you could push for help, you know. And who should come to see me? That old German lady. Martha Olson was her name. And I thought, well, I picked up the, I had a bell, and if she comes one step closer, I'm gonna ring her. But she didn't. She turned around and left, so. It was horrible. Well, that's a, a little bit of a scary story. <laughs> okay, since you brought a few more, I, I was thinking of three things I just want to ask real quick. Well, first, you were alive when John F. Kennedy was killed. Do you remember where you were that day? That I was in, Cal in Wyoming in the store when I heard that. I'll never, ever forget it. Yeah. That was a bad day for America. Oh, it was a bad, bad day for America. Did you like the Kennedys? Yes, I did, and I've read every book I could find about them. You know, you they're, they're just a huge family with tons of money, but it, I really enjoy reading about them. Who was your favorite U.S. president? You, you, you've obviously lived through a lot of them. Who, who do you remember as one that you would say, I really liked him, he was a good president? Well, I don't know. Uh, I think Reagan was a very good president. Ronald Reagan. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I liked Kennedy, too. And uh, I, you forget the others, you know. Are you a Republican or a Democrat? And I'm not going to say. You're not going to say. <laughs> Sam asked me to tell you that one. And then... Um, and then uh, one more uh, question. You're, everybody's kind of got a prophet they loved, um, you know, of the church. When you think back of the prophets, which one do you remember as being one that you really resonated well, with? Heber J. Grant. He was the president when I was growing up. And uh, I really did like him, and I also got to t shake his hand. Uh, my friend, has, uh, dad was a bishop, and we would go to conference with him every, all the time. We could go in the tabernacle and sit on the front row. And uh, I got to shake hands with him, and uh, uh, David O. McKay, and I uh, can't remember the other one. But that was really an honor for me to get to do that. But he would take us up there to conference, and it was wonderful. We yeah. had wonderful times, wonderful. And then lastly, uh, just because I think this is a real honor for a person, um, 
you got to be the first to <coughs> uh, raise a flag for the veterans at the new veterans uh, memorial down there. You, you and my dad uh, mm -hmm. got to raise that uh, flag. Tell us a little about that and then being the Grand Marshal. Well, that was really and truly an honor to raise that flag and I will never ever forget it. It was Dwayne helped me raise it and it was such an honor for Ralph too, you know. He was picked, I was picked to, and I had his flag that they gave me, and uh, I, uh, I raised that flag. That was pretty neat to kick that off. Uh, that was a great honor that they selected you, and then uh, you also got selected to be a Grand Marshal. You know, there's only one person selected a year to do that. Um, that was a pretty neat thing. Tell us about that. Well, I was working up at, uh, volunteering work up at the school, and uh, Mrs. Money come and told me that I had been chosen, and I looked at her and I says, hey, April Fool's Day is over. And she said, no, it's the truth, but I never told a living soul. And so she went up to the office and asked them if I'd said anything, and they said, no, I hadn't said a word about being chosen. And uh, so she told him that I had been. And uh, then my son, Dwayne, he called me and asked me if I'd forgot to tell him something. And I said, no. I said, Jill and I bought a new house today. You know, I said, there's nothing I need any more to do than tell you that. And then he says, well, I know it. And he told me that I had been chosen. Grand so, Marshal. Well, Grand Marshal. Well, Grandma, those are some great things and great stories. And I mean, that we could go on for hours, I know, um, telling them. And that's a pretty good life of 95 years plus more to come. And uh, there's, there's been a lot of great parties. I, this last one, I looked at all the people that were here for the 24th of July and just thought, what a tribute to you uh, and your life. There's 129 really? people here mm -hmm. that day. Wow. And they all love to come. That's what thrills me, yeah, is they, they all love to come.